May I have your attention? Please welcome back TechCrunch Managing Editor, Matt Burns. Oh, I love a full room. Thank you so much for coming back after lunch this morning. We saw some great companies. We talked about poop, we talked about zits, and we talked about factories. And this afternoon, there's even some more wilder companies. And then tomorrow, you have to come back tomorrow for the finals. You've already seen the company, but the format changes tomorrow. Tomorrow, the company's pitched to a new group of judges, some of the best investors in the entire world. And they have six minutes to pitch, but they're going to take questions for 10 minutes from these, these uh, judges. And that's important. We're going to dive deeper into the company's profile and business model tomorrow. But first, we have to get through this section. So I'm going to bring out the judges, and we're going to get started right away. We're not going to wait anymore. So judges, come on out. Give them a round of applause. I'm gonna read some bios. First up to my left here is Marin Bannon, co-founder and managing partner at January Ventures. They're a pre-seed stage firm focusing on B2B startups that are digitally transforming traditional industries, including work, health, and climate. They have invested in 60 companies to date and closed Fund 2 in March 2022. Before co-founding January Ventures, Marin was CEO and co-founder of Little Lane, a mobile marketplace for local experience. Next to her is Sam Blonde, partner at Founders Fund. He invests in companies at all stages and works with founders and go-to-market leaders on accelerating revenue growth and increasing value of their businesses. Previously, Sam was served as the Chief Revenue Officer of Brex, where he oversaw revenue growth for less, from less than one million to several hundred million dollars of annualized revenue. Prior to Brex, Sam was a VP of Sales at Zenefits, and he joined the company pre-Series A. Sam was an active angel investor during his time at Brex and Senefits, backing 25 software companies ranging from seed to series C. Next is Frederic Dom, general partner at Google Ventures. Frederic is a general partner at GV, specializing in disruptive technologies in the consumer space. She has spent 15 years building consumer and enterprise products for the public, and pro public companies and startups. Frederic helps start GFE's women's health team and leads a cross-functional team of investors and advisors making investments in this space. Before joining GFE, Frederic led product and engineering efforts at Uber. Earlier, Frederic pioneered social at Yahoo, building online communities and adding user-generated content to the company's search and marketplace products. Next is Danielle Lay, partner at NEA. Danielle is a partner at NEA, investing in consumer, social, and e-commerce infrastructure companies. She is an investor in and or board member of Fizz, Patreon, Goody, Pair Eyewear, Block, and among others. Prior to NEA, Danielle was an investment banker at Goldman Sachs, and also Danielle's bio is the only one I didn't have to cross off any lines. It was a great link, so thank you very much. Next is Rebecca Lynn Doyle, managing partner at Insight Ventures. Rebecca joined Insight in 2016 and spends time across high growth application software payments in fintech and consumer internet. Previously, as a part of Insight's on-site team, she worked closely with portfolio executives on growth strategy. Rebecca started her career as a management consultant in McKinsey's New York office, advising clients in the technology, financial services, and consumer good industries. Give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Okay, now is the time. So I'm bringing out the first company. Remember what I said this morning? Good energy, loud clapping. Thank you very much. So from Boston, Massachusetts, we have Recon Tools. Presenting for Recon Tools is Christian Reed. Come on out, guys. Christian Reed from Recon Tools here to talk about the future of construction. The future of construction is not old tape measures, boring hammers, it's digital. Digital tape measures, digital measuring devices, digital everything connected together, no more errors, all money, baby. Twenty-two and one eighth, thirty-four and eleven sixteenths. Remember those numbers. Hello, everyone. My name is Christian Reed, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Recon Tools. Along with my co-founder, Costas, our entire lives have been spent building and making things. Very quickly transitioning from Legos and building skateboard ramps in my backyard, I knew how to use a circular saw well before I knew how to drive. Even at MIT, the vast majority of my time was spent working on projects in the shop and at the media lab. All this passion transitioned well to starting Recon Tools in my basement in 2020. Being surrounded by so many tools on a regular basis 
gave way and gave thought to one of the reasons why all the tools were made for that surrounded us and led us back to the inevitable construction. Construction as an industry has been plagued with inefficiencies for decades. Productivity has stagnated, innovation has largely underserved the space, and the vast majority of tasks are still managed on paper. A variety of these disjointed processes combined with oftentimes simple human errors result in almost 20% of materials on a given job site being completely wasted and in the dumpster. Of these errors, the vast majority of them contribute to these, attributable, uh, these avoidable errors and contribute to over $100 billion wasted in construction each year. Recon Tools has set out to create a connected ecosystem of hardware and software products to significantly reduce these errors and streamline operations on the job site. Through our connected platform of both hardware and software tools, Recon enables both professionals and anyone working on a con uh, construction site from residential all the way to commercial to streamline their measurement operations, share measurements, collect data, annotate and create tasks in a dynamic way uh, and eliminating many of the paper steps in the process. Before we dive too much more into how Recon has worked to create a connected ecosystem, it's important to understand how the current flow of information works on the job site. Many simple steps result from anywhere from writing down a measurement incorrectly, reading a tape measure wrong, or simply not following a direction based on the wide variety of resources and labor working on the construction site. Recon has worked to develop a system of both hardware products to capture and execute the data, as well as a mobile platform to connect all the data together and allow streamlined execution on the job sites, eliminating many of the human touch points in the process of executing daily occurrence tasks, and it's distributed enough that every worker on the job site can use the equipment. This is not something that only a supervisor or project manager is using. This is something that everyone down to the individual electrician or plumber is using on the job site with it. So switching over to our overhead demo over here, the core of the Recon platform is a Rock job site app. The Rock job site app is a simple and easy to use platform that works on any mobile device, tablet, and allows everything from measurement capture, automatic putting into calculators, utilities, and other common actions that exist between architectural plans and builders' discretion with it, all in a very streamlined manner with it. So really takes a lot of the elements that I'm using, very, very human-centric things of writing down a measurement, typing into a spreadsheet when I get back down to the office, and with the Rock app, it's all done in a very streamlined manner with it. So switching back to the stage view for a second. So the T1 Tomahawk, as everyone has probably seen before and used a tape measure on the job site, the T1 Tomahawk really represents the core of our hardware ecosystem and allows measurements to be captured on a large backlit display on here. So repeating the measurements that I bombarded everyone with at the beginning of the presentation here, capturing a measurement is as simple as clicking the button on the screen, going down here, recording the second measurement, and now, not only do I have the measurements here on a side-mounted e-paper display, so I have this on my hip, I have a full log of my measurements on here. If we switch back over to the screen over here with it, you can see my previous two measurements of 20 and 15 sixteenths and 34 and 1 were automatically sent over there to it. So it really streamlines the process and takes out what I normally have to hang you off a ladder and write down measurements on my arm, go over there automatically with it. So really makes the process easy. Um, and again, assuming for instance that this measurement of 20, 20 and 15 16 has to be cut into a piece of material, I next transition over to our M1 caliper device. So the M1 caliper is an augmented tool that clamps onto existing saws that contractors already own and very simple just outputs the display and measurement on it. So it really streamlines the process and takes any guessing out of what measurement I'm interpreting with it. And finally, replacing a Sharpie or writing down a measurement, I can print out a QR code label, which has both information printed on the label for a worker, as well as a QR code, which links to the specific location of the app for traceability purposes. And finally, any tool made for the job site needs to be designed for the job site. So back to the presentation now. So construction is a pretty large industry, as everyone can imagine, and I think the way we look at it is really focus on tools that are used for data capture and execution on the job site. So these range from tools that I'm using to collect information and physical hardware to the software I'm using to consolidate it all together with it. So, you know, $15, $15 billion industry, 6% growth every year, and I think our real target is to help grow and advance this industry twofold. The first is really to make digital measuring tools as synonymous to a job site as a drill or a hammer. 
Every contractor in the world owns a tape measure of some kind with it, and it's an inevitable pathway and certainly some work to be done to get to that point for us to make it a compelling case, but having that in every person's tool is uh, toolkit is certainly the first step. The second is to make the Rock app synonymous with what workers are using on a daily basis with it. So there's certainly a different set of tools available for project managers, but something that individuals on the job site have access to on a regular basis. Of course, the inevitable question comes up is why haven't someone else done it? And it really boils down to two fundamentally different approaches. On one hand, traditional tool manufacturers have really focused on incremental improvement and optimization over true innovation. On the other side of things, enterprise tools have largely focused on hyper-specific tasks or individual functions on the job site. Recon Tools is the only system that has the granularity needed to execute day-to-day -day operations on the job site. Whether or not you work in construction, everyone here has probably been involved in some kind of construction project, whether on your office or home improvement space on it. It's time we demand more from our contractors and stop expecting errors, cost overruns, and timeline delays as inevitable. With Recon Tools, you can measure runs and cut once. Thank you. Thank you very much. Danielle, let's go to you first. Great. Um, first of all, thank you for presenting and for being the first one of the session. That was wonderful. <laughs> you did great. The, th the throwing of the tools was very effective in getting the audience going. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the revenue model of the business? Yep, absolutely. So Recon Tools started as a crowdfunding product, so our revenue model, like our company, has evolved rapidly over time with it. So right now, to this day, we sell hardware products. Hardware products has gotten out there, and just recently, to coincide with TechCrunch Disrupt, we launched our mobile app with it. So for the time being, we sell hardware products, and the evolution of the mobile app initially is to give out for free, get people on it, learn what features are valuable, and then in the background discussion, which was somewhat parallelized with how we were working on our hardware products, our partnerships, that there's a lot of ability ranging from I'm a fastener company and now I have a utility that workers, rather than go to Home Depot and look at the chart that's covered in dust, Sharpie marker on it of what fastener do I need, I can input the measurements there, ranging from very simple, just here's what fastener to buy, to direct integrations with the manufacturer. So of course, that's like anything, a longer uh, process with it, but both from uh, stores to manufacturer side of things, there's a lot of benefits of having a central app that everyone is using to collect data in a very elemental way. Like everyone uses a tape measure and doing right now a bunch of, you know, some people have have the you know, half-thought apps that like, you know, look like an Excel spreadsheet that I put in the App Store with it, but having something that's purposely designed, and it's very easy for individuals to design their own utilities for it. So it's as simple as making a spreadsheet, so it's really easy, and I think the longer-term idea is to have kind of a mini App Store where manufacturers can put in there, and if I'm a deck builder, I get all the, you know, um, strong tie, you know, applications in there, and rather than look at, you know, they send out, you know, a box of catalogs that's this big, and you're following these little spreadsheets to try to figure out what faster you need versus go in there, type it in, boom, I get this, all right, I'm at Home Depot, and I, I personally don't need to go as the supervisor on the job site, I send a worker so I can stay on and keep it moving, where now that's usually what uh, production goes to a stop because one person with experience has to, you know, drive an hour to Home Depot back and forth to get it with it, so. Got it, yeah. that's helpful. And one quick follow-up question, um, so, is the expectation to sell at the company and project level, or is the expectation that um, a worker themselves is gonna go and say like, I want this tool for myself? I think the excitement, and especially being a 13-person company, is yeah. that either works. Obviously, selling to a business like you know, Suffolk Construction, there's a lot of overhead process of doing that sales cycle, where these are sold in Amazon, Home Depot, so someone could go on the website, buy it, have it in their toolkit, and then when you see enough people on it, then rather than have to do a top-down approach, it's like, hey, all my workers are using these digital tools. I wonder if there's a way for me as a project manager to see the analytics on it. So while I think we are devoting efforts to that more top-down approach of project management. I think it's very exciting that anyone can use it and then later on start, lever like I may get the T1 and just use the side e-paper display and then later on when five people have it, it's like, hey, I'm up on a roof, why don't you just put your phone next to there and I'm gonna stop shouting measurements one at a time and have you mm -hmm. always mess up the measurements with it. So I think it has the purpose for both and just by design of being a smaller, you know, more engineering design focused company initially, we focus more on the B2C opportunities with later on the more B2B opportunities of selling 200 tape measures and uh, you know, more customization on the software side of things. Got it. Great. We'll go to Marin then, then or uh, Frederic. Um, great job on the pitch. Loved Thank hearing you. about the business. Um, my question is, I was wondering if you could share some of the highlights of your traction so far. Yeah, absolutely. So we have more than 65,000 tools in the field right now with it. So these are tools being used every day with it. And I think the most remarkable thing to us is really 
Um, you know, you have the first part of the generation who grew up using TikTok, cell phones, so it's not a big sell to have a digital tool that makes sense. I think really what's remarkable for us is seeing the contractor who's been using tools for 25, 30 years, eyes light up when, you know, we show the digital tape measure and, you know, I think a lot of people assume that just showing the measurement digitally is what gets the excitement, but the excitement is, hey, you go up on a ladder sometimes, right, and every person universally, whether I'm on a, you know, multi-billion dollar project or a home improvement project shouts measurements down to someone else with it. So it's like, click, 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 I'm, you know, my eyes are closed, I'm taking all these measurements and they're automatically in real time being shared with any mobile device I have with it. And that's when the eyes really light up and then, you know, you get past the educational piece and that's when I think the inspiration kicks into it. So I think that's, you know, the less quantifiable piece of it, but really the excitement of that. We're taking a very stubborn demographic of people and just like industry as general and, you know, slowly easing into the trend, you know, whenever VR and AR becomes something, obviously it's a much different platform, but not on day one, we're saying where VR goggles, like, whoa, hold on a second, I'm using, you know, the hammer my grandfather gave. And, that, you know, it's not an exaggeration, right? This is, this is what construction is today with it. So I think that's the most exciting part of the traction, but we have 60,000 tools in the field. We have 25,000 pre-orders for the T1 with it. So I think it's all um, very future focused and the app I think is gonna provide an even more way of not having to invest initially in a hardware product of just get on it, use it to organize my measurements and then, hey, it would be great instead of having to manually type these in, I had something to automatic do it to help upsell the hardware with it. Agree? Yeah, I have a quick question. So thank you so much. This is great to see it in the field itself yeah. and, and see some customer validation. My question is, how does it fit into a broader ecosystem of uh, construction tools? Yeah. Like, do you have any APIs? Do you have any use cases that make it that they can actually integrate all these measurements into a bigger project so you can yeah. actually drive adoption both ways, both from the contractor side, but also from the platform side? Yep, 30 Absolutely. seconds. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So APIs, I think, play a big part uh, of the overall thing just because we're not looking to replace, we're looking to augment software. So a lot of the bigger companies yeah. who are using Procore, Autodesk Construction yeah. Cloud with it, there are a lot of APIs for both pulling data from our app, importing CSVs, so that goes back and forth, and even our hardware products directly. Like just the simple act of, I have a bunch of issues that right now are written on the wall, I can use it to connect with our hardware products directly with it. So a lot of flexibility and openness from our end, knowing that it has to be part of it and it's not replacing with it, which is another barrier of entry yeah. in general with it. Right. Well, thank you very much. We'll leave it there. Give them a round of applause.